Okay. So when I work with a client, personal training, which is all about their fitness, I assess their posture. They don't know I'm doing it because if they do, then they'll change. Uh, but I look at how they stand. I look at how they walk because you can tell what muscles are overworking and which ones are underworking. The more you understand what, you know, typical, um, neutral posture should be. And that is what, you know, when you think about what personal training is, which is if you're going to work out on your own, you want to kind of personalize it as much as you can to what your needs are, not just about fitness. It's not just about your heart rate, you know, your VO2 max, uh, how fast you are, you can jump. It's not uh, that that's great. That's fun. That's entertaining. But in reality, when you think about what you are trying to do is we are trying to kind of counteract um, in terms of posture of gravity. We're trying to counteract gravity, which is pushing us into the ground. And we have these joints that are capable of moving. And so uh, over time, you might not have any chronic postural issues today because you still have your joint mobility and you still have flexibility that is natural when we're born. But over time, that goes away. And the years of use of your joints, even if it's just sitting use, you don't even have to do much if it's just sitting, will degrade the joint if it's not distributed um, proportionally. So let's go through these. This is me. This is a few years ago. It was after my night class. I'm really tired. And this is my dog that I know. I miss him. Okay, so my front and side view. My posture's gotten a lot better. Um, ideally, when you're looking at posture, there is a grid line, right? So there, there are, you know, if you go to a postural specialist or someone that really looks at this, they have big sheets of paper where you would go in and stand there not knowing what they're looking at. That's really important. Um, because again, if you are wanting, if someone's assessing your posture, chances are you're going to be like, I've got great posture. You know, it's just our natural need to want to feel good about ourselves. I have pretty dang good posture, pretty balanced between my, my joint mobility and strength. Um, I will say I have worked on it. So this right foot tends to turn out in this one. I was not. But you can kind of see the head turn this way and the head going forward and my hips are slightly forward. So I have a little bit of a hip push. So I'm not an easy one to assess. So with the homework assignment, with the pictures you took, you are going to, you want to insert these perfectly vertical lines and horizontal lines. And what you're aligning the lines to, and you need to take note, okay? Because I'm telling you what to do with the bony process in the front. So I know you can't see it, but I can kind of gauge it. So the bony process in the front, if you if you feel it, that's the that's where you put the lines. So if you send me pictures of your lines way out here or way in here, I'm gonna tell you these lines suck. So this is why you need to be here. Because if you're not here, whoever's not here in class today isn't going to know what to do, unfortunately. So right here, the bony process, straight vertical lines. The horizontal lines, and it's not one line, okay? It's not one down the center. It's two lines, one here, one here. We have a line at the ankle joint horizontally and make it straight. Don't hand do these, please. You need to use like some type of editing thing. At the kneecaps, at the same pointy bony process, this way, and along the shoulder joint here, where the, the head of the humerus is here. So from there, 
what you are looking for is any deviation. So is your hip to the side? Is one foot turned out? Now I don't have, there's no way you, what you would do if my foot was turned out, I would put a green line along the foot or I don't care what color do you use. Just make it bright so I can see it. So you can see it. So, and the other thing is my hands here, you can see my thumbs and fingers. That's good. My humerus is in neutral. If you're like this, you can take a look at your pictures if you want, where you the face or the, the top of the hand, you're internally rotated. You want to note that internal rotated humerus or hands, um, shoulders rolled in because your hands are for the most part an indication of what's going on in the shoulder joint. Head tilting. So you can see here, my head is a little bit closer to this line. So I drew the line here. My shoulders, another thing is shoulder elevation. If one shoulder's up like this, that's an elevation. You wanna note that. So if the, don't make the horizontal line go with your change. You do the, the horizontal line and then a separate line showing that you have a shoulder elevated. Same with your hips. You might see this in your picture, right? With a hip elevation. Take note from the side view. You're looking, this line here goes from the ankle up. So you don't necessarily want to reference the hip socket. I could be, no, I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this. So this, notice it's not back here and it's not way up front here. So I'm looking at where my heel is and ideally, right in front of this bone, that is the center of the heel. So it's not the bone, it's right in front of that bone. Does that make sense? That little bony knob, align the vertical line, that's the red line, to an S kind of right around the front of that, where it's center of the stump of the ankle, okay? Okay, let's move forward. But anyway, you can kind of see my hips, so where I'm looking for and what you want to put dots on, right, for the green line, you go from that center ankle to the center of the knee, right? You can see my went from the ankle to the knee to the center of your femoral head here, right on the outside. So back down on the side, you'll feel this bone on the outside. That's the center. So of... Uh, where my green line went. So you can see my hips are pressed forward from the vertical line. Does that make sense? How you wanna be able to, and then you wanna, again, look at where your shoulders are. So I went from hip to center of my shoulder. And you can see there is a slight sway. And then the next dot, would be the ear, okay? So again, to start, vertical line right in front of that ankle bone, vertical. From there, you wanna put a dot at the knee, a dot at the hip socket, a dot at this mid shoulder, and a dot at the ear, and then see how, de how you deviate from the vertical line. So ideally, everything lines up with that red line. That is considered neutral. Everything else is a deviation of how your hips can push forward. So in this case, in my case, I need to do, I need to do some ab work, probably transverse abdominus work here to pull my hips back. I think my quads probably need some work too. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm assessing it right now. Like what would I tell myself to do? probably need to do, I probably need to do some back work, maybe more extensions, more hip extensions a little bit, maybe on the top, not the bottom. And then I probably should do more deadlifts for the hips. 
Anyways, okay, moving forward. Oops. If you happen to damage your spinal cord, you can actually lose the ability to move any part of your body. And this is something we've been reminded of our whole life. Stop flouting. Sit up straight. Engage your core. Get your elbows off the table. They all mean the same thing. All your parents are saying was, prioritize your spine. See, the thing is that she moves, we were just born with full range of motion. I came to Edgar Gottlieb, spent time traveling the world and researched places where back pain hardly exists. What she noticed was people's spines with a flatter lumbar curvature didn't suffer from back pain. She referred to this as a J-shaped spine, and you can see the difference in the images here between the S-shaped spine taught in the Western world and the J-shaped spine in people where back pain doesn't exist. Gokhale states the J-shaped spine is what you see in Greek statues and in young children university. What she's saying is, we're all born with a J-shaped spine. Now you may have noticed when young children pick things up from the ground, they drop down into this perfect squat. This kid, unlike myself, did not need a casting director, nor a six-year-old amazing grace to teach him this move. In fact, nobody taught him, and no guy did not exercising. This is in fact a free chair resting human position. But unfortunately, as a consequence of our current human conditioning or our culture, this natural resting position is about to be taken away from this child. He's about to be taught. A resting position is in fact a chair. And when he soon starts school, seven hours a day, every day, he will be asked to sit in this quite frankly weird and unhuman position. Now, I didn't even take into account the amount of hours this kid spent watching Peppa Pig. <laughs> According to the British Chiropractic Association, the total number of people off sick from work with back pain increased last year by 29%. From the survey, the reason for back pain was sitting too long in one position. So I tried to find the survey totaling the number of four-year-olds off sick from school with back pain. But would you believe it? I just couldn't find one. You see, we are more than well aware. We are a generation of sitting on our backside human beings. But the specific point I would like to bring to your attention today is the fitness industry's ignorance of the spine to have us hooked on task completion. Time, weight, and distance. This is for most people measures of improvement and progress. How long can you run for? How fast can you run? How much can you lift? How many repetitions can you do? How many calories can you burn? This list is endless, but they're flawed. None of these take into account how you're moving, or more importantly, how you want to put. You see, nothing can ever compare or will measure up against the exquisite movement you had as a three-year-old. A study in 2012 found that musculoskeletal conditions were the second greatest cause of disability in the world, affecting over 1.7 billion people worldwide. Professor Wolf, a world leader in healthcare, described suffering from musculoskeletal disorders and being like a Ferrari without wheels. If you don't have mobility and dexterity, it doesn't matter how healthy the rest of your body is. So surely the access to a healthy physicality is working back to the full range of motion. To understand how your body moves and to be able to function like a human. Said simply, the ability to move like you once could when you were a three-year-old, we can and should start relearning how to move from the example of children, ditching these current measures of time, weight, and distance, and spend time unraveling restrictions, getting back the movement we actually want to have. All that's left is an aspiration for ourselves in the school playground as a child, able to play and move without fear of injury and using our body's full potential. And those are the results we're aiming for, such as slim disease, bone muscle, do come, but as a byproduct of moving the body as it's designed to function better. There's a famous Chinese proverb, you are as old as your spine. In all honesty, I have more chance eating penguins how to fly than humans a better way to sit on a chair. We're just not designed to do it. Today, I'm gonna to leave you with a powerful standing posture. In cultures where the J-shaped spine exists, 
People's butt muscles engage every time they take a step. It's one reason they have these strong butt muscles that support their lower back. To demonstrate how the standing posture works, I will need a bit of audience participation. So I'll need you all to be standing. So. Okay. I thought that was a good little, I don't know, motivational, I don't know, kind of an idea of yeah, understanding the function. So here is a picture, again, of the vertical line that I had you do. Um, so again, for you came in late. You need to take a picture of yourself from the front to the side, and you're going to draw lines on your body. You're going to have to go into the assignment. You want to put, that's what this dot is. The dot at the knee, the dot at the hip socket down here, and the dot at the mid shoulder. And from there, and also the ear, this would be neutral. So what this is doing is aligning each major joint that takes the, mo the majority of your weight and it's displacing it evenly within the joint. So that, for example, your knees don't have wear too much wear on the insides or the outsides, right? Or your quads are functioning more appropriately this way, especially from the front view. So let's look at the front view. Again, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, ear. You might need to watch the beginning of this class to get the beginning of the lecture. And maybe I'll bring it up again in, in the, at the end. Um, so ideally from the side view, your ear is in line with the shoulder, is in line with the hip, is in line with the knee, is in line with the foot, okay? So if you look at your picture, you might see that there might be misalignment. Your head may be jutting out to the front. This is a sign you might be looking a lot at a screen. So for example, if I sit down, I am, and the screen is in front of me, right? Here. And I start to relax my pelvis. My spine is now going that way, right? But to be able to see the screen here, I'm gonna have to, again, curl this way. And then, um, so so I've got a movement this way, thoracic vertebrae is going this way. And if I keep my head in neutral, that's actually right here. So my head is in neutral right now with my ears, but to see the screen here, I'm gonna have to do this. Does that make sense? So right now I'm hyperextending my neck. My traps are kicked in, right? My shoulders are pulled forward. So my upper traps are kicked in like this. And all of those, Erector eight muscles in the neck, in the axis, um, in atlas are contracted really tight. So I'm going to come out of this one at a time. So if I were to lock my knees, my hips were back there like that, right? Um, if I were to move my pelvis forward, that's where this is. If I pull my ribs back into center, that's what my head is doing. So imagine sitting and gaming for five hours like this with the screen up there. Do you think you're gonna have a headache? Is your neck gonna hurt? You know, degenerative disc the problems in your neck? Yeah, probably, right? So if you're rounded, in order for you to be forward, it requires extension of the neck. So pulling that up makes it a little more obvious to how this works. Okay. So again, from the front view, these are those points at which you put your vertical lines, center ankle, center knee, but I had you start here because that's, this is ideal. What you're seeing here is the ideal. Start here, draw your vertical lines, and then from there you'll see deviation, ideally. And you guys are gonna start seeing people in on campus and you're gonna go, oh my God, oh my God, they're so not aligned. It's hard not to. Can you guys see me, my feet? Okay, so your feet matter, okay? The second uh, and the, the, the big toe, and the second toe, that's center. So that's supposed to be aligned. I think it's the second and the third toe maybe. I cannot remember. Anyways, that's supposed to be aligned with the center of the heel right there. 
So if I align those two, it's a slight pigeon toe. Slight pigeon toe is actually centered. So if your big toe is aligned with the center, that's externally rotated at the hip, right? So neutral from the front position is feet forward, which is a slight pigeon toe. You take, go ahead and stand up, you guys. Take your hands, find that uh, bony process in the front, right? Your ASIS bone, find that. You want to align the center of your foot, that's the second and big toe to that. Draw a direct line. It's not shoulder width. Chances are it's not this wide, right? Or this wide, it's inside. So the, the femur looks like this. It's a, got this huge head right here that goes out. When I am doing this, I'm trying, I'm hitting this part of the femur. The inside of the femur that takes all of your weight is literally inside here. So that bony process in the front is an indication of the center of the head of that humerus. That's where the knee should align and that's where the feet should align. It shouldn't align out here. It's to the center of this head. Does that make sense? So you find those two bony processes in the front, you bring your feet in, slight pigeon toe, and then from here, your hands should be in neutral with your thumb and finger showing. And then you want your ears, then you go through the side view, right? That would be more neutral. Your weight, pay attention to where it's hitting in your foot. Is it really far to the front? Are you feeling it in the ball of the foot, which is here's your heel? Is it up here? Is it really far back? Your weight should be centered in the heel. So for example, when I have people do squatting, I say, get your weight to the center of the heel. I don't go back and go center. It needs to say centered in the heel. If it's too far back, you're going to have to compensate too far forward, right? So center heel, weight in your heels is not back here. It's actually right here in front of that bony process. That's where your weight should be distributed. Knee should be above that. Hip should be above that. And from the front, feet should be turned in. So that is neutral. Go ahead and sit down. So the, here's another picture you can look at. This has a little bit more descriptors of what neutral is. So if the foot is turned out, this is really an interesting thing to think about. Is that happening at the ankle joint, the knee joint, or the hip joint? Yeah. You are awesome. You are right on that. You got it. So the hip socket here where that bony bone that that dot is aligned is a ball and socket joint it has so much range of motion right i can go in a big circle big circle because it's a ball and socket joint it can turn out in right is a lot of range of motion the knee joint underneath it is tongue and groove like this, tongue and groove. So it's not meant to twist. If it twists, you are gonna be in a whole lot of pain. It's meant to stay together and it has can open and shut like this, but only to a certain degree. It's not meant to rotate at all, okay? The foot again is also has some variation in how it can move, right? But it can't, your foot, cannot swivel around the ankle. So if your foot is turned out, that's because the hip socket is turning it out. Does that make sense? So if I were to stand up, again, here's my foot. That's my, that's my hip that's moving this. The movement is in here. It is not happening there and it's not happening there. It's right here. So when you stand, if you're turned out, that's a sign the muscles in the glutes are firing really intensely. 
the weight of gravity now has changed around how it's aligning in the tongue and groove joint. So if you're a long distance runner and you're running with your toes out, pain, you're gonna have a lot of pain, a lot of wear and tear, your quads are not functioning properly. They're probably firing a little later than they should, which means you're prone to ACL tears. If you have one foot that turns out, I would put money on it if you're an athlete, that that's the one that ACL is gonna tear because the quad fires slowly when it's not turned properly, when this isn't aligned properly. This is the one hip flexor in the quad. Does that make sense? So this type of alignment tells you a ton about what muscles work, what muscles don't work, and what, you're, what injuries you're prone to have. So let's get into some exercises with the neck. So, I'm gonna have you stand up and then we'll get into this. Everybody stand up. We're gonna work on the neck and the shoulders. So our in-class assignment, by the way, is what I'm about to talk to you about. So these are the exercises. The in-class assignment that's up asks, what are the exercises we did? So the first exercise we're gonna do is called a simple shoulder roll an arm circle elbow flies flies we'll start with that I might add some, I might add to that okay so shoulder rolls I want you to think about the shoulder joint the shoulder joint is floating. It's not really attached. I mean, there's muscles holding it in to stay attached. The only place it really has an attachment is from the clavicle and it just sits right there. It just sits right here. And so this is, has a huge range of motion because it's not really attached in terms of muscle or bone to bone, except for right there. So um, the shoulder joint, ideally, again, is in line with the center of the rib cage, and your head is on top of that. So with a shoulder roll, I mean, this is so simple. The goal is that you hit all of the muscles in the shoulder joint that attach to the humerus and the clavicle that goes into the body, right? Your pec, your traps, your, all this stuff, the rhomboids that attach and hold the shoulder in, in place. So we're gonna do, uh, let's do 10 forward rolls. So you do forward and backwards. And I want you to think like a circle. So ideally you can hit every single edge, including the push down. So I'm shoving my shoulders down. I'm pulling it back, lifting it up, shoving it down. So from a side view, it should look like I'm rolling my shoulders into a circle. So what happens is you get stiff, is it starts to look like more of a vertical lift like this. So people start to lose the movement here or they'll go forward and then they won't go back. The other thing that you'll notice, keep on doing it. So we're going to, we're we going back? Yeah, we're going back. Is if your shoulders don't function well, you will see the elbows moving like you're moving your elbows. Like this. So this is a way that your brain will say, oh yeah, I'm doing it I'm like this. So when I watch someone, when I first start training, I look for which arm is the elbow working because it's not supposed to. That means you're working the lats a little bit more than you should, right? So the, ideally your arms are just going on for a ride and there's nothing happening in the elbow. So let's go the other direction, which was back up forward, down back up, forward, down. So you're contracting, stretching, and activating all the muscles in the shoulder roll. The next thing you're gonna do is an arm circle. So with an arm circle, the first part of it is hand posture. So your goal with your hands is to take your fingers and put them on the pads. And then open your palm without the fingers coming on. So the goal, again, is that your fingertips 
can touch the pad and your palm can open without your fingertips lifting off. You might find that one or two don't work. You might find that you can't. As we age, this starts to turn in and collapse in and these muscles stop working. So ideally you can create a big palm without using your fingers to compensate. That makes sense? So what will happen again, if your palm doesn't open is you'll start to use your fingers and they wear out, right? Old person, young person, old person, young person. So this is called a golfer's grip. I'm compensating on this one. See how my wrist is going? Ideally, it's straight. And the other thing is you don't wanna have wrist spent. That's another form of compensation, meaning your brain's trying to make it work, but it's telling the wrong muscles to do it. So wrist straight from the side and from the front. This hand's very functional. Can you see how this hand is going like this for me? So try to open the hands. Keep your fingers on the pads. I think for me, when I first started practicing, I had a couple that wouldn't touch. So then what you do is you let your hands collapse. Your goal is to keep the fingers to touch and then eventually you can open. Okay, this is how you maintain youthful hands. Yours are, yours are really great. Mm, whoa. Broken? Yeah. That'll happen, but you wanna try to keep as much as you can working. You might have to get that. Wait. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. It's something to work on because eventually it might affect your elbows, might affect your shoulders, right? And manipulation, doing all sorts of cool things. Okay, so that's the first part of that this exercise. So with shoulder rolls, you get your golfer's grip, fingers on the pads, palms open, thumbs forward. The first thing you do is you make sure your feet are directly underneath your hips. I do this with clients when they do shoulder press. If I'm not having them do something else, any standing lift, I say put your feet underneath your hips. Okay, so with this one, from a side view, we're going to start with a forward roll. The first thing you want to do is pull the shoulders back. You don't want them super far back, but you want the shoulder blades to come together. And you want them somewhat kissing. So can you guys see my shoulder blades? Can you see them now? Can you see how I'm pulling them tight back there? So the key is being able to do that without having to like, like overly press the hips forward. You just want to be able to pull the shoulders back. Now, imagine I've zipped them up. My shoulder blades are zipped together. And then your goal is to roll the head of the humerus in the, so the socket without the shoulder blades separating. So you see how my shoulder blades are separating? Not good. Keep them zipped. So essentially what you're doing is you're holding the joint in place and rolling the head of the humerus in the socket. So we're working that rotator cuff. We're working all the muscles. Keep it up. Ideally, you can do, I don't know, 50. And that you can maintain the shoulder blades zipped up. So if you can't do that, you need to work on those muscles that pull the shoulder blades together. Mid trap, rhomboids. Next is palm up. So we're going to externally rotate. You want to be able to extend and open the elbow joint. If you're tight there, you'll look like this. So your goal is to extend, neutral stance, shoulder blades tight, going backwards now. So from a side view, shoulder health. And you can see this is requiring, if you were kyphotic, this would be almost impossible because the shoulder blades can't get around the ribs. So again, we're retraining what I call the posture corset up here. So that is an arm circle. So elbow flies, same golfer's grip, same neutral foot, uh, foot position. You want to create, so we're going to um, flex and extend the humerus now without rotation. So think of this as a door. Here is the 
Oh, what is that? What is this? The hinge. There's a hinge here. There's a hinge here. And I've got my golfer's grip. And I'm going to shut this door and open the door. So for both sides, it looks like this. Shutting, opening, shutting, opening. What you might find is your hands want to collapse back into fists. Keep this extended. Or you might find that your hand wants to rotate. You want to make sure that it is a neutral hinge joint. The other thing that will happen is you'll see people's heads go back because they can't really get this range of motion. They're, they don't have the ability in the shoulders to go forward. So instead of doing this, they'll do this. Again, and you'll see joints move here. You'll see all sorts of things if there's a dysfunction in the shoulder joint there. Um, okay, let's add one more. Find a wall that I don't think that is within. this part won't work. So find wall space here. This is called air bench. So some of you might know this as wall sit. If you have knee issues, be cautious. If you feel that this your knees are gonna explode, don't do it. Just do what you can. Again, you guys, someone can come over here. There's wall space over here. So you want to look at this. So here's the wall. A vertical line. Your head needs to be pressed to the wall. Shoulders pressed to the wall. Lumbar pressed to the wall. Okay. The goal is that your whole spine is pressed to the wall. Then you bring your feet out and down. So imagine this is your air bench. That's why they call it air bench versus the wall sit. Because you need to be 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, and vertical up. So I will demonstrate um, on this. Your foot position from the center of the socket, right? That A-S-I-O-S is the distance between your feet. So we're not going out here. We're not going out here. This makes it real easy. If you're tying, I can tell you right now, you're in a class, do this. You can sit here forever. You got your adductors going and then lean. You'll be just fine. This is not that. Neutral. Walk your feet forward, slide down to where you, your heel needs to be directly below the center of the knee. So again, if your knees are wider than this inside bony process, it's too wide, bring them in. The weight should be in your heels. Knees should be in line with the hips. So if your knees are wider than your, your hips, too wide, bring them in. From here, palms up like this, put them on your thighs, pull your shoulders back, pull your head back. Hold your head, lower back should be on the, on the wall, lower back flat. We are hitting your hip flexors and everything you need to be longer. And not only that, but this is training vertical position. Drop your shoulders down, pull them back, lift your head up, keep your knees in. Weight in your heels the whole time. Don't let it go to the toe. If your weight is going to the toe, that hip flexor doesn't want to work. So you might have one going to the toe. That hip flexor is a problem. Chances are that's your foot that turns up. Keep them tight, keep them in, pull those knees in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> pull your head back. So you don't have to do 90. 90 is ideal. If you can last two straight minutes, that's the goal. I had an 86 year old client with hip replacement, knee replacements, and she trained herself to do two minutes on that. It's awesome. So this is like being able to sit in neutral, right? And not only that, but the wall over time, and this, this really was surprising to me with my training. The more you do it, the more you get the kinesthetic sense or the proprioceptive sense of what vertical is without having to have a wall to guide you. Like I know I'm vertical because I've done this so much. 
right? So I can tell if I um, if my hips are not because I've trained enough to know where my neutral plane is because of the vertical wall. So it's not just about creating stamina, you're retraining your brain and your nervous system to be aware of what that alignment feels like. Go ahead and sit down. Okay, that is your in-class assignment. Those are the exercises. Let's take five minutes and just get that done. It's not posted. Okay, so let's post it and go. Um, Um, we're done. There it goes. I can't remember. I asked you guys to describe them or did I just say list them? Oh, are you all good? Yeah. All right. So they don't need my elevator music. Oh, did we forget elbow flies? Oh, God. Stand up. No, we did them. Yeah, yeah. You're good. You're good. Okay, let's go back to this. Those, those three postural exercises. Any of you guys follow like major power lifters? And you have you see any of you? Okay, how have you watched them warm up? Yeah. How often are they doing this? Every time. You do not want to start heavy loading your your chest, your back, your shoulders until you have all of those stabilizer muscles that depress, that extend the spine warmed up. You might go into the gym now, like I did when I was your age, and just start. But over time, as you sit too much, you stand too much, you're not working the muscles evenly. And so you're prone to injury. So with, let's say, bench press, before I do any bench press at this point in my life, I'm 46. I'm still freaking young, but I'm not 26. Um up here. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have clients work their mid spine. I bet you should not be doing bench press unless you have done like hanging, like you stretched your lats. You, you know what I mean? Like hang on a bar for quite some time. Hang sup supinated, hang pronated right? Like this with the hands pronated. You need to be doing arm circles, shoulder, chest flies, your thoracic extension on the, okay, I'll demonstrate here. So when you're doing bench press, for example, I am, you're on a, a horizontal, uh, a horizontal bench, right? And what's happening right now is gravity is pushing my thoracic vertebrae and my neck into, into alignment. So I should look pretty dang aligned right now. If you are, let's say tight, or you've been sitting a lot, you're gonna look like this on the bench press. So if you plan to train people, you need to be able to see if they are hyperextended in the neck. Chances are, they're really tight in the pec muscles and their shoulders aren't gonna pull back, right? So before you do anything with those clients, you need to get them to be able to realign the cervical vertebrae. So that's why you do the arm circles, chest fly, shoulder rolls, have them hang. Their lats are tight, they're gonna be like this. So you don't want their lats tight, you want the shoulders to be able to slide back. 
So you get that weight up. Ideally, the shoulders pull back. If they don't, if they're stuck forward because you're kyphotic, you're gonna put way too much pressure on the front of those pectoral muscles and you're prone to tear a pec muscle. If you are more flexible in the back of the spine, like meaning I can pop the shoulders back, the shoulder girl slides back, I'm less likely to tear a pectoral muscle. So working your upper spine and getting this movement before you start punching the weight is super important. That makes sense. Same with bench press or uh, with push-ups. If you're doing push-ups and you're tight on the top, you're gonna look like this. I'm really hoping really these are stable. You're gonna look like this. Shoulders are gonna be in your ears, you're gonna be rounded, your head's gonna be popped forward. And even if you lift your head up, you're all cramped up on the top. You should look like this, right? Where the shoulders go back, you can open the chest up right? Without having to come up and round. Okay. So having proper alignment here is actually really important for your strength gains and for injury prevention. So over time with gravity, let's move on to the upper body, the head, if you're sitting too much, starts to move forward. This is just an idea of with more head forward, more weight is forward, more gravity is pushing on more surface area, right? If my head's here, the least amount of surface area. If my head pushes forward, I now have more surface area for gravity to be pushing, right? So you can see the surface area here, which equates to poundage. Okay. Hey guys, it's Matt Shane from Upright Health. In today's video, I'm going to show you a simple exercise to help you correct forward head posture and that slump that comes from using a smartphone all day or staring at a computer screen all day. If you do this exercise regularly, you will start to notice results generally within one to two weeks as the muscles that help you control your posture improve and strengthen. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to do this exercise, how often to do this exercise, and why you're going to need to keep doing this exercise to make sure your posture keeps looking good. To do this exercise, all you need is a blow people all like this beautiful people all right now. You can even need to blow away if you got way too much artwork on your bamboo wall. Now, to do this, you just need to put your back right up against the wall, and you're going to just start sinking yourself down the wall so that your hips are going into what's called flexion. So you're closing the angle between your thighs and your torso. So he's not doing a full air bench. So you can get the postural benefit of this from pulling the head back into alignment just from doing a partial hip flex. You do not have to go all the way down into a 90 degree bend. So you're doing like an air bench. You don't have to do that. You just need to get down low enough where you can feel that you have the ability to put your low back flat into the wall. So you're trying to make sure you that you can not slide your fine. hand under He's there. You're just trying to keep properly. it pressed right up into the wall. Then what you're going to do is make sure that you feel the mid-back section also flat against the wall. You're going to keep your chin tucked and then pull the back of your head into the wall. You're just going to hang out just like this. Now there's a couple ways this will go wrong. If you have a really, really hunched back, you're going to try to do this. You're going to see that there's this gap between your upper back and you're going to be hitting more towards the top of your head rather than the back of your head right here. So you want to make sure you keep the chin tucked and your eyes level on the horizon and then pull the back of your head into the wall. For some people, this may take a while to get used to. You may find that you're just like this and you really can't get back. It's fine. You want to focus gradually, gradually over weeks and months gradually getting that head back. What you don't want to do is really struggle at it and try to like shrug your shoulders and like compensate in all kinds of funny ways because that is not going to help you. If what you do is like put your head back like this, you actually just made your posture the same as when you were in the So again, low back flat, mid back, nice and flat against the wall, upper back flat against the wall, and then you going to pull the back of your head back towards the wall. As far as the leg position goes, you want to make sure you keep your knees just slightly bent. If you lock your knees, you're going to stress out the knees. If you go into a deeper knee bend like this, 
it's actually going to turn into a pretty distracting quad burn. So uh, if it's okay, if you want to do that, but if you're focusing on improving your posture, you probably want to be even weight just slightly better so you don't have to worry about on the burn. Now, uh, there is another variation of this exercise that you could do um, that we showed in the previous video where you're just kind of sitting against uh, the wall like this on the floor with the knees bent or the knees uh, straight like that. This is an okay variation too. You can do it this way, but it's also quite awkward to do at the office or at school. Okay, we're going to do that. Um, so find a wall, find a wall, sit at the bottom. So imagine I'm on a wall. We're going to sit on the ground. Your goal, so imagine here's the wall, it's to get your butt to the wall so that there is no big space. Um, you can also use the door. If you shut that door, that works too. So once you're here, so the key is with straight legs that your feet, actually, you're, it, if you're just working your upper posture, that's fine. Ideally, though, you can work your leg posture and your spine posture. So you want your feet turned straight. So if they're turned out, you need to use your internal rotators. Your feet should be slightly pigeon-toed, hip distance apart, palms up, pull your head back, shove your shoulders down and back. So push the shoulders down and back. Lower um, lumbar should be flat, head back, chin tucked. So again, pull the head back, chin down, hold it there. If you find that you want to pull it forward, keep on correcting, pull it back. If you're fine that your legs are relaxed, lock your knees again, if you can. If you can't, I'm fine with the knee bend. Your hamstrings are too tight. But ideally you can sit at 90 degrees at the hips, vertically, toes straight up, palms up, head back, shoulders shoved down, and back with the lower lumbar flat. Let's go for a whole nother minute. How are you guys feeling? In your hammies? Yeah. I'm gonna do a little correcting. Make sure your lower back stays flat. Push them down. You, you can bend the knees. Okay, yeah, this works. Yeah, you can bend the knees, but open the legs up. Yeah, so that they're hip distance apart. Yes. Yeah. Good. Is your butt in the corner? Yeah, you want to keep it in the corner. Back. Lumbar should be flat. You know, you guys get to the But it's okay. Because it's you're it's relative. It's all kind of relative. But you should bend your knees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. As long as the lumbar is flat. I'm impressed. Go down a little bit more. Maybe you're going to get the problem. But really good, so what I just did. Not hurt your hands. You can bend a little bit. 
Yeah, I was like, I need to get out of that. Your hands seem tight. You're done. Good job. Is that hard? <laughs> My hands are real tight. Sorry. So, um, this is often just a nice little easy way to do it. At, um, so, on the floor, it's harder. You don't have to do that. I just made you do the hard part. If you really wanted to be using your phone while in this position, but you know, take a breath, man. You take a break. Put the phone down. If you want to hold your position for two and a half to three and a half minutes. That gives you enough time to feel the muscles alongside your spine, fatiguing and working to maintain the position. Most of you have probably never felt that before, so it might feel a little bit weird, a little bit scary. It may feel like those muscles you want to cramp. If it feels intolerable, of course, get out of the position. But I promise you, over time, as those muscles get used to working, you won't really feel that crazy burn fatigue or cramping anymore. It usually takes a few days and maybe a couple of weeks to clear up. And so what you should notice is after you've done this, oftentimes the first time when you come off the wall, you'll just notice that this whole section of your body is better able to get into the upright position. If you don't notice it the first time, I suggest continuing to do it at least a couple times a day, and then keep checking in to see what's going on with your uh, thoracic spine posture. It's a very simple exercise that forces the thoracic spine to extend, and those muscles are definitely going to kick in over time. How often do you need to do this exercise? Well, it's really going to depend on your life and how often you're in a slump. And it also depends on how strong those muscles are back there and how connected you're able to get to those muscles. So you're going to have to play with it, but in general, I would suggest people who are concerned about having some fat posture do this exercise at least twice a day. And if you've been spending like eight, nine hours in front of the computer, your posture is definitely going to suffer. So you want to make sure you're, you're interrupting this slouching position with some better extended positions on a regular basis. So that might mean interrupting your work day to spend two or three minutes just pulling yourself back into a position like this. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully that actually so, um, yeah, so what he's specifically describing is kyphosis, punch back. Kyphosis is rounding. This is what most of us all do when we're sitting. We are sitting in a kyphotic position. Over time, though, the muscles right here in the neck, again, this person lifted the spine up right here. The neck would be, they'd be looking back here, right? That's how intense those muscles are working to hold the head up. In, in here. So typically this issue here is a issue that stems below here. It's not always the obvious thing that you're looking at. Most of these issues stem from your pelvis. The pelvis, because it's sitting on two ball and socket joints, the pelvis can swivel around. So you know how I showed you your femur can work around, right? Well, if I hold my femurs down, my pelvis can swivel around those two ball and socket joints. So depending on the balance of the musculature that holds the femur and the pelvis and the spine kind of in a, you know, your core, that's what the core is. It's not just your abs, it's everything around the pelvis that maintains a neutral position. So again, neutral is, let me go over this, the hip points, the ASIS and PSIS. So there's two points here, that bony process in the front and a little tiny bony process right here where the sacrum and the iliac is right here. Those should be horizontal to each other. There should be a horizontal line right here. That's neutral. So this gets complicated. Where your pelvis is changes what your upper body has to do to maintain a forward position, right? So if I push my hips forward, 
I'm going to have to maintain balance against that vertical line of gravity. I have to compensate somewhere. So if I push my hips forward, I'm leveraging my weight here. Now I'm not really using my mid spine and now I'm leveraging weight here, right? If I, let's say, tip backwards, again, this is what makes me want to externally rotate my feet, tucking my tailbone under, I'm going to compensate somehow to stay upright. If I have one femur that turns out, my pelvis is going to rotate that way, right? What does that do to this sip socket? Well, now this one's externally rotated. Does that make sense? So if this is 90, I rotate it. Now it's 105, externally rotated, compressed and compact on this side. My whole body has to realign, right? To maintain a center point from gravity. That's why those neutral positions are what they are. You're trying to align left and right, front to back, axial rotation to be equal as much as you can. So because the pelvis is sitting on these ball and socket joints, it can rock, it can press, right? So for example, I, if I'm teaching someone an overhead, let's just stick with uh, shoulder press. First thing I teach them is neutral foot position because that forces their quads to function and it forces the hips to actually come back into somewhat of an alignment. They can still press, right? But if their feet are open, now I'm even further pressed, right? So none of this is working. So by having them shift their feet forward, they have to brace with their quads and their abdomen. That's the first thing I do with the shoulder press. Even though I'm not working this, I want it to actually stabilize the pelvis. So give them dumbbells. And the first thing I have I watch for is this. Do their hips press as they're pressing, right? Can they maintain alignment with their pelvis as they press? And that has everything to do with all the muscles, right? That maintain a neutral pelvis aligned with gravity. Lower doses, tight hip flexors. So this is this posture where I've got an anterior tilt, tight hip flexors, hyperextended kind of here. Um, you guys know someone that looks like this? Pregnant women look like this a lot. So these two go can go hand in hand sometimes. Ex excessive S curve. Here's another exercise. As and then we'll right. finish. Today we're going to go over this right. one very common cause of back pain, and we're going to give you an exercise to fix it. Okay. This exercise is going to help you unlock a lot of range of motion in your spine. And it's going to help you get a stronger. Help, what's up, guys? Oh, sorry. Health sorry. Fit in your spine. And it's going to help you get a stronger, healthier, more functional back. Now, if you haven't already, uh, we put together a video package uh, with exercises and different. One of the things that we often find as a big cause of back pain is that the spine becomes very stiff and it's not able to move correctly. So. What happens is when your upper back becomes very stiff from sitting at a desk all day and driving and, and just not getting a lot of movement, whenever you need to move around, what happens is you're basically just moving from your lower back here, right? And the upper back just becomes more and more stiff and never gets actual movement to it, right? So what we're gonna be doing today in this exercise is we're trying to disassociate the upper spine from the lower spine, right? So we're trying to get some movement. I'm gonna have you guys do this with him. So, you're gonna to wanna to get on the floor and have space. So use the use these space. So you're gonna need enough room that you can open your arms up like this, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to lay down. And you need room. Unlock some of this upper back area. So then we can use that a little bit more when we're exercising Chair, you more need to. Just throughout our everyday activities, okay? okay so this come is very, over. very important. And if you find yourself as one of these people that has become very, very stiff, and every time you move or do anything, it's all through the lower back, then you definitely want to put a lot of time into doing this exercise along with any other. Table. Let's get to the exercise. 
This exercise is called a tagline in email. So you're just going to need something to put in between your knees, a you notebook, a crate, or a foam roller, anything uh, that mimics something like this. So you're going to come down on your side, and we are going to put this yoga block in between your knees here. Okay. Now, you don't need the yoga block. Your knees, though, need to be together. So if you were to feel your knees, they should be in line. They shouldn't be separated in line. And that's really what the yoga block is meant to do is you, you've got to kind of press it to maintain that alignment. You don't need to. You need to align. I like the way he describes this. Some people like, also do this exercise like this with the knee draped over. That's fine. Um, I actually like to use this method a little bit more because it helps us put some tension in between uh, the legs here, okay? So I'm gonna start here with my arms like so, uh, reached over. So pretty much right now, my hips are stacked on top of each other, my shoulders are stacked on top of each other. Okay, so you wanna have 90 degrees at the hip, 90 degrees at the knee, 90 degrees at the ankle. Yep. Keep those knees together. And you're, I'm gonna let him teach, but yeah, yeah. he didn't go over that. This window portion, okay? So I'm gonna take my hand, the hand that's to uh, towards the ceiling, all the way around here, trying to keep my arm, hand, shoulder. Adjust if you need more room. You want to feel what this feels like. And I'm gonna get back to this half table, and I'm gonna pause here, and then I'm gonna come back. Okay, so and that's the window. So now let's talk about what we need to focus uh, on while we're doing this. One of the big ones okay. is. Like keep I said, keep these together, here you can feel your knees. Block. Now, what we don't want to happen is this top knee to slide over because that means that the hips are sliding over and that we're actually getting movement from the lower back. And we discussed earlier, we don't want movement from the lower back. We want to keep this boom, firm and in place, and all the movement is coming from our upper back. So, the knees tell you if your pelvis is rotating. You do not want your pelvis rotating. We want everything coming from the upper thoracic vertebrae. In a, in a twist. This requires some degree of extension. So let's go ahead and roll the other direction. Get on the other side, 90 degrees at the hip, 90 degrees at the knees. You can put your hand there, make sure your knees are even and you wanna maintain that. Hands together. You go up above the head. You want to be able to get to the ground. Like you should be able to hold that and open. Now check your knees. If they've slid, put them back together. Now, one thing I like to have clients do is take a huge breath, lift the ribs up to let that arm open up. Check your knees again. You want your head to be looking at the hand that is rotated over. So if your hips are facing the left, you need to be looking to the right. Yes, you are not facing, your head should not be looking where your knees are pointed. And then take a deep breath in and then relax the shoulder down. You guys feel a difference from right to left? Might feel different. So I like to do that sometimes before I start bench press with people because it forces that upper spine to function. So again, he's kind of showing this version of lift. Tension here on the block, and I'm also going to keep some tension in my lower core area to make sure that my hips don't open up too much. Okay, here, so I'm disassociating. Keep here. We will finish this on Wednesday. Um, I think you guys, the, the homework assignment with your front and side views, I didn't do until Monday. So take your time and do a good job on it. So a week from today. Okay, we'll see you Wednesday. What? Oh, yeah, we didn't have our phone. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, you guys. I'm so sorry. God, you guys told me beforehand. <laughs> okay, you gotta come up here. Here you go. Thank you.